Good day, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues. Thank you so much for being here and thank you for the opportunity to present to you today. I am Michelle Pretorius. I am a PhD student at the Northwest University in South Africa. And I am so honored to be here today and to give you a little bit of feedback from one of the articles I did on the nature of client violence against social workers and the factors that may contribute towards this phenomenon. My supervisor is for Palida Haps and my co-supervisor is for Kevin Hans So before we really begin, I just want to say that you know, studies which explore the safety of social workers indicate that most social workers are prone to experience some kind of violence somewhere in their career. And that's what was kind of interesting to me and made me decide to do some research about this. So today I'll start off and give you some background with regards to this study. I'll give you an introduction, explain a bit about the methodology that was used, also explain the results that have been achieved and give an overview about the limitations and then recommendations for any further studies with regards to this. So, first of all, it's very important to note that this study was done by means of a scoping review of social work literature on crime violence amongst social workers. So the aim of this scoping review was basically to identify, to analyze, and to summarize any available literature in the field about crime violence in order to determine the nature of crime violence and other factors that may contribute towards this phenomenon. So you'll see here at the site, I actually showed that this is actually only phase one of a much larger study that we are busy with. And the larger study is named a policy framework to enhance the protection of South African social workers. So before I really start to get into this, I think it's important to differentiate with the help of literature, of course, what the difference is between work violence and client violence, because this is not the same thing. And while I'm at it, I'm going to mention a few academics while I'm explaining. And then at the end of the presentation, I'll give you a list of everyone that I've mentioned in the event that you wish to read any further, then you can just refer to them. So in 2019, Flynn actually said that workplace violence is like a general overall term that can be used to describe a variety of behaviors ranging from negative workplace conduct or things that's inappropriate to life-threatening attacks. This can include things like harassment, threats, or even physical attacks. So the International Labour Organization also went on and added that it's incidents where staff are verbally, physically, or even psychologically abused, threatened, or assaulted within circumstances related to their work and this includes commuting to and from work, involving implicit or explicit challenges to their safety, well-being, and these challenges can be what resulted to their health. Now, we all know workplace violence has been emerging as a major public health concern over the last decade or so. And obviously, this topic has attracted a lot of media attention as well. There has obviously been no exceptions when it comes to the healthy professions. And what is more, Flynn obviously noted in 2019 that there are almost as many violent incidents in the healthcare industries and the social services professions as they are in all other industries combined. That's a scary thought, right? Many academics actually agree that incidences of violence in social work may be even higher than in other healthcare industries, 
because social workers are dealing directly with service users in highly stressful situations. And social workers are routinely exposed to unstable and potentially violent situations. So now that you have an overview on workplace violence, we can take a look at client violence. Client violence is described as any incident where a social worker is harassed, threatened, or physically assaulted by a client during a social worker's performance of her job. And it differs a bit from standard workplace violence in the sense that the client is actually a stranger who comes to the social worker for assistance or support or care, indicating that the client is actually dependent on the social worker and then gets aggressive when the service is rendered. So when we started with this topic, I did a preliminary search on EBSCO host academic search complete. And it indicated quite a variety of international literature on this phenomenon. But most of this literature, I would focused on the prevalence of client violence in a specific country, or it focused on the impact and the effect of client violence on the social worker and the service professional. Furthermore, the existing body of literature seem to have utilized a lot of different definitions and measurement techniques, and there was kind of no consensus amongst researchers towards the exact nature of client violence or the factors that contributed towards this phenomenon. Therefore, the main focus and purpose of the scoping review was to explore the current literature in order to determine the nature of client violence and the factors that is contributing towards this phenomenon. So how did we then go about to do this? We really wanted to look at as many as possible literature on client violence and then explore different questions from there. To gain a deeper understanding, we combined Oxy and O'Malley's five stages of scoping view process with the preferred reporting items for scoping review and meta-analysis extension. That's the Prisma SER model. Until we finally had an approach where we could identify the research question, identify relevant studies, made the study selection, charted the data, and analyzed, summarized, and reported the results at the end. As for the search protocols, Searching for articles is one of the most important aspects of the scoping review. Therefore, we consulted the university's librarian to be sure not to miss any valuable data. Searches were either conducted via the institution's one search engine, which includes about 252 databases, and articles were also hand searched. We used the time span in January 1995 to October 2019 as limited data on the phenomenon forced both historical data as well as the most recent available data to be accessed in order to gain rich data for the scoping review. Searches were also included or limited to English speaking literature as limited resources for translation of data was available. Furthermore, I did a specific search stream. We constructed a specific Boolean stream to use or to get specific data for the study. I put the stream there for you to see. What we did, we actually started to perform searches in the title and the abstracts of the articles in the databases, where after we developed inclusion and exclusion criteria to narrow down the searches. So there is a lovely figure to explain the process to you. And what this figure basically says is that the initial search gave us a total of 354 citations. Well, this seems like an unexpected amount, right? 
So what we did is we imported this into the Mendeley database management system, and this helped us to categorize it a bit more. So we had to exclude about 94 of these as it fell outside of the time frame and the language requirements for the study. We had to exclude about 87 more, which were duplicates of the same articles. Then we applied the inclusion and exclusion criteria to the title, the abstracts, and later to the full text. And this eliminated about 142 more articles. Final elimination was done, and we were left with a total amount of 14 articles that were actually valuable to use for the study. So when coming to what we did, there was two main things that was important for us. That was initial mapping. That was basically study characteristics in terms of the extent, the nature, and the distribution of the included studies in the review by means of the date of publication, the geographical distribution of the study, and the study participants. And then we had the thematical analysis, which is the themes that emerged from the studies. And that is also the feedback that I want to give to you today in terms of the results that we received from the study, which you will find quite interesting. So without any further ado, let's get on it. Interestingly, the 14 scoping review articles decimated between 1996 and 2018, it seems like a series of studies on the safety of social workers were done during the late 1990s, where after there was like a significant gap in the literature and only a limited amount of studies published on the nature and extent of social work and violence against social workers. The trend on this topic seems to re-emerge after 2010 when more studies start to be published again. Also, it seems like most studies done on the nature and extent of violence against social workers have been done in the USA, Israel, and Slovakia. Take in mind that there was a set of inclusion criteria stipulated, so the study population is quite similar. However, if we break it down into the gender and age of participants, it seems like the majority of study participants were female, you can see it in the table presented there, and the age distributed was about an average of 42.1 years. Lastly, we used a process of thematic synthesis to identify the primary outcomes of the studies included in this review. And it's centralized between three main themes. And these were also used for further thematic analysis. These themes were firstly, statistics which showed the extent of client violence, risk factors that can influence client violence, and then the effects that client violence has on social workers. And those are very important for what we are going to discuss further today. When starting with the theme of the extent of client violence thing, you have to take into account that piece I started with saying that most social workers are prone to experience client violence somewhere in this career. So articles included in this review confirmed that physical assault, verbal assault, property damage, and other forms of violence can form a subcategory of client violence, and social workers might experience and thus describe the very nature of client violence in itself. The first aspect that we are going to consider here is physical assault. According to academics, physical assault of a social worker can include hitting, kicking, pushing, shaking, or striking a social worker by hand with an object or with a weapon. A social worker may sustain injuries during this assault or not. So referring to the growth and articles in this review, the extent of physical assault that a social worker are prone to experience in their career 
ranges from 3% until 17.5%. This is an average of 23.4% likelihood that a social worker will experience physical assault in the duration of his or her career. Moving on to verbal assault, or even the threat of being assault verbally. Kurtas, Coles, and Boyle in 2010 described verbal assault as when a patient or a client, their family, family friends, use offensive language, yells, screams, with the intent of offending or frightening a social worker. So articles indicated a very high incident of verbal assault or threat of assault from clients towards social workers. The verbal assault ranges from 37.5 to 88.8, .8, whilst verbal threats range from 20 to 83 percent. So when you calculate an average, the total number of verbal assaults a social worker is likely to experience or to be exposed to is about 70.6%, while the threats of, of assault is 51.8%. which seems extremely high to be experiencing in one's career. Property damage is when a patient, a client, their friends, their families intentionally causes damage or steals from which belongs to a social worker or to an organization or agency. It includes damages or theft to your vehicle, your personal effects, your home content, your office equipment, or office supplies, or your furniture. The extent of property damage that social workers is probably exposed to is 18%, so 53%. It's calculated at an average of about 30% that social workers is exposed to during their career. Two other aspects that social workers is also exposed to is sexual harassment, although this is indicated at a much lower point between 23 and 15%. And in addition, some articles also added newly emerged violent fields like infections, lawsuits, and injuries from stopping fights between clients and other community members. So I think what is important is to note that client violence can be divided into several subcategories, namely physical assault, emotional assault, or emotional threat of assault, property damage, sexual harassment or other forms of client violence. And when considering the extent of this violence and the likelihood that the social worker will be exposed to this in his or her career, the articles indicated that the social worker is most likely to experience verbal assault, property damage, physical assault, and least likely to experience sexual assault. So moving on, to the risk factors. This is the second theme that was found in the scoping review and it relates to the risk factors associated to crime violence. It's so very important to understand risk factors relating to a phenomenon because it helps us to understand the phenomenon itself. So risk factors relating to crime violence were found to be factors relating to client characteristics to case characteristics and to social work characteristics. And we drew up a sunburst graph to illustrate and to categorize the risk factors. So the first risk factor relates to client characteristics. I think this is so valuable because we can use this to create a profile of clients who is at risk to be likely perpetrators of client violence against social workers and to possibly identify them. So it was found that age is a very important risk factor. Clients between the ages of 13 and 39 
yes, are at a high risk for participating in property damage, while clients between the ages of 30 and 39 years are considered to be at a high risk for threats against social workers. Gender also plays an important role. Male clients are at high risk to be perpetrators of all kinds of violence which amongst social workers or against social workers. Culture. Minority client groups are at the lowest risk to be perpetrators of client violence. And then mental health status. Clients with the highest risk to be perpetrators of client violence are clients who are in emotional distress, followed by clients with mental health issues or co-occurring disorders, intoxicated clients, clients living under social economic circumstances, and lastly, clients with a criminal history. So from this, it seems like younger, especially male clients, who are struggling with mental health challenges or at a higher risk to become violent. Secondly, we have to look at case characteristics, the cases we are working on. What kind of cases causes clients to be more violent? And we have to distinguish here between high-risk cases and medium-risk cases. So cases in high-risk settings include criminal justice services, drug and alcohol services, child protection services, and child and youth care services. While cases in moderate risk settings include mental health services, developmental disabilities, mental retardation services, school social work services, and family services. Because when you remove a child from a family, suggest any kind of changes in childcare, fail to satisfy the rights to a benefit, or create any kind of dissatisfaction in the family system, clients seem to react with more violence. In fact, any kind of cases that require social workers to spend more time with a client or spend more hours working on that case may have a significant impact on the potential of client violence. The last risk factor that we have to consider is social work characteristics, because believe it or not, this can also have an impact. Yet it seems like gender, age, and experience is also important factors. So in terms of gender, male social workers seems to be at a higher risk to experience all type of crime and violence, whilst female social workers seems to be at a higher risk for property damage. Age, younger social workers seems to be at a higher risk to experience all type of crime and violence. And experience, social workers with little experience seems to be at a higher risk to experience all type of blind violence. Johanna said in 2014 that younger social workers are especially at a higher risk when they render services to clients who are older than they are themselves. And that was important in terms of the risk factors. So if we move on then and look at the third which is the impact it has on social workers. It seems like there is a significant association between the experience of client violence and poorer mental, mental health amongst social workers. It has an emotional and a behavioral impact. So the articles that we included in the scoping review found that emotional reactions can include stress, hallucinations, mood changes, and emotional exhaustion, manifesting as short and long-term symptoms for social workers. In the short term, a social worker may experience fear, insecurity, stress, loneliness, and intimidation, whereas in the long term, it may include PTSD, somatic effects, anxiety, 
and sleep disorders, nightmares, even social dysfunction. Finally, social workers kind of transform their behavioral strategies towards this aggressive clients and they adjust their cognitive emotional behavior towards the realities they face. So this behavioral reactions then include burnout, lack of motivation, role rotation, and even becoming absent from their work. And this causes short-term and long-term strategies and coping mechanisms again. So in the short term, a social worker may kind of feel paralyzed and avoid their clients, feel less motivated to work, and internalize their emotions regarding the violent incidents that has happened. You know, but in the long term, this has implications for the organization that the social workers work for. And they start to be more absent. The organization has a high staff turnover. Social worker tends to be antagonistic against clients. So basically, I gave a whole lot of information, but all it really means is that all of the elements founded in the scoping review provided categorical clarification on the extent of client violence, the risk factors, and the effects of client violence on social workers. It was further found that all of these three themes are foundational in terms of the nature of client violence and the factors contributing to this phenomenon. So let's talk limitations. The one search database from the institution was used to conduct the search. And although this is a very widespread database, results is not always static. It may differ from each search attempt. So we implemented measures to counter this, but there is still a possibility that not all relevant articles were included in the search. So the total number of articles were 14 which might be a bit low. Also, it is a limitation that articles were only included in English and search articles was only used in English. Most of the articles were published in the USA and it might sometimes be difficult to generalize this results to the bigger international community. Some of the articles included had some methodological limitations or was generally not of a good quality, and this may also have an influence of the result. And the fact that there is generally not consensus amongst researchers about this phenomenon can also be seen as a limitation and definitely have an impact on the general result of the study. However, I think we got a lot of valuable results in this study. And governments or departments on an international level should utilize this new understanding of the phenomenon in order to set regulations to protect social workers against client violence. Social work agencies or organizations internationally should also incorporate practice management strategies on the macro, meso, or micro levels of service delivery, utilizing risk profiles in order to better protect their social workers. And social work international researchers should furthermore continue to engage in client violence research, whether as individuals or as collaborators with other disciplines, to better understand this phenomenon. As I said earlier, this coping review is only the first phase of a larger multi-phase study with the aim of developing a policy framework for the protection of social workers in South Africa against client violence. And the results of this scoping review greatly informed what will be further explored in phases of the study and confirmed the need for this in other studies in the field of social work as well. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to me and to gain more information about this topic. Should you have any feedback, questions or comments, you are more than welcome to contact me 
able to contact Prof. Halida Hafs, and we will be glad to talk to you about this subject. I'm also adding the alternative readings, which will be available. Thank you for taking the time and have a lovely day.